Fashion is one of the fastest growing waste problems in Australia. We're spending over $5 billion on fashion a year. And at the same time, more than half a million tonnes of textiles and leather end up in landfill. I want to show people the scale of our fashion waste problem. We've piled up 6,000 kilos of discarded clothes that I borrowed from a textile recycling company. How long do you think it takes Australia to throw out this much fashion? Come over and look at this pile of clothes, ladies and gentlemen. This is not an art installation. This is garbage. This is actual garbage here, guys. This was all thrown out. Are you throwing out too much fashion? I can tell you are. This is 6,000 kilos of clothes. How long do you think it takes to throw out this many clothes in Australia? Say so over five years. Lower. One year. No. You guys, you look fashionable. Two weeks. Two weeks, no. Guess how long it takes to throw out this many clothes in Australia. Have a guess. A week? Two days? An hour. Lower. What? Ten minutes. This is ten minutes' worth. The whole of Australia throws this out every ten minutes. Wow. Wow. Ten minutes. And it all goes to landfill. Gone. This is six tons of clothes. Probably going to fall off it pretty soon. 6,000 kilograms of clothes, and it only takes Australians 10 minutes to throw it out. In 20 minutes, can you imagine the size in 20 minutes? 30, 40, 50, an hour. In one hour, Australia throws out 36 tonnes of clothes. We just couldn't build it high enough here in Martin Place to show you that. That's 10 minutes worth. 10 minutes worth? Yeah. Where does it go? Landfill. That's landfill. That's atrocious. That's a lot of clothes. That's, that's insane. <laughs> it is kind of insane, isn't it? Yeah. How many items of clothing do you reckon you buy a week? One. And how often do you wear those clothes? Not very often. Not very often? No. How many clothes do you buy each week? A couple pieces. So you're buying like 100 pieces of clothing a year. I'm guilty. Yeah, guilty? <laughs> Are you a victim of fast fashion? Well, I can't say no to buying a H&M. Oh! <laughs> so busted. <laughs> Just consider this. If we're sending six tonnes of clothing and textiles to landfill every 10 minutes in one year, that would be the MCG filled Two and a half times over! So how has it come to this? In the last five years, we've seen an increasing amount of high-volume, low-cost clothing in our shops and malls. With new trends and new garments arriving daily. To better understand our fast fashion buying habits, I'm meeting slow fashion advocate Melinda Tuali from Fashion Revolution. What is fast fashion? Fast fashion is typically characterised as high volume, low margin. It comes into store almost once a week in new designs. It's known for its, its pace in terms of it can um, bring an item from the factory to the shop floor in around three to four weeks. And, you know, it's sometimes as cheap as a cup of coffee, so people can keep buying it in high amounts. I don't think a lot of people actually think of fashion as being part of the waste stream, but how big a problem is it for the environment? There's some pretty devastating impacts uh, from, um, from the industry and, and from the, the scale that it's now at. One of the most extreme examples would be the Aral Sea in Uzbekistan, which is one of the world's largest cotton producers, and that's now a tenth of its size um, due to the irrigation requirements for the cotton production. Um, and that's, that's irreversible, you know, mm. that's permanent. Uh, there were 40,000 fishermen that uh, worked on that, that sea, uh, and it is now literally a dust bowl. When we throw away a piece of clothing, 
we don't think about the fact that we're throwing away the resources and materials that go into making it, like cotton, oil and water. For just one cotton t-shirt, it can take up to 2,700 litres of water to produce it. That's enough drinking water for one person for almost three years. Today I'm meeting four fashion-obsessed friends on one of their shopping expeditions to find out why fast fashion is so addictive. Because it probably doesn't surprise you, it's not an area of expertise for me. Hi. Hello, guys. Hi. Hi. I'm Craig. Estelle. 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 Jamie. Jamie. Tegan. Tegan. Nikki. Nikki, okay. Well, a good shop? Yeah, yeah it's really good. Really right. <laughs> You're winning, Tegan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So is there more shopping to do? We can... Definitely, yes. yeah, definitely. I think cotton on. You lead the way, because yeah. I'm not a great shopper, as you can yeah. see. Yeah. <laughs> You're dissing me already. I said no worries. <laughs> so how often do you go shopping? Twice a week. That's probably the minimum. Oh. I online shop. Online I shop? I don't come shopping very often. Yeah. In the holidays, I find that I'm here. Yeah, all the time. How much is this? $15. It's pretty each. cheap. Yeah, they're pretty That's good nice. for casual tops. Do you think you have things exactly like no, this at home, really? No, I actually don't. No, I actually don't. I like these little blue ones, hey. The girls admit nice. to shopping weekly, even daily. So they're a little shocked to see my well-worn holy sneakers. <laughs> I, mean, I didn't make them. I think the shoes. What's wrong with the <laughs> shoes? <laughs> Time for new shoes. Really? So how long do you think you've had them for? That's a good question, actually. I reckon two years, maybe. Oh. <laughs> All right, let's, let's, let's stop talking about my fashion sense. Let's use yours. This isn't a one. <laughs> That's enough me. shopping for me for another two years. <laughs> done a bit of shopping. Will you guys come with me to another place that has a lot of clothes this afternoon? Yeah. Yeah? yeah. OK. Come with me. Let's go. Sure. <laughs> I want these friends to understand the ramifications of their fast fashion buying habits. So I've organised a tour of one of the largest clothing and textile recycling centres in New South Wales. At the Smith Family Warehouse, they process discarded clothes for resale in their stores and overseas. The money is then used to help educate disadvantaged children. First, I want to talk to General Manager Rick Mulhall, who can explain some of the problems caused by our disposable clothing culture. How many clothes have donated to the Smith family? In this facility, we would process just under 13 million kilos of clothing every year. 13 <laughs> million kilos. Wow. What? That is a lot. That is so Okay, so how much is that? Like, can Look, you... if you want to get a visual, um, say the SCG full of clothes. Where does it end up? About the top three or four percent in terms of quality goes into our own retail stores. There's about 60 percent of that volume we export to other countries around the world. Uh, about another five to ten percent we then sell it to mechanics and people like yeah, that as yeah. industrial rags. And unfortunately, there's about 30 percent that's really not good for much at all. That goes to waste. I think you're getting quite a few clothes from these guys. Yeah. Great. Right? <laughs> we would yeah, appreciate it. have got a few bags coming from me. Yeah. Great. From my family. <laughs> Thank you very much. No worries. We went shopping this morning, and I, a lot of the clothes were incredibly cheap and kind of yeah. like really cheap to buy and that kind of stuff. Have you noticed the change in the quality of the clothes that come through here since it's kind of moved to fast fashion and flimsier clothes? It is noticeable, yes. Flimsy clothing that's really, really cheap to start with, often when we get it, we have to do our quality process on that. And if someone else can't wear it, unfortunately, that does go to landfill. And that last financial year cost us just under a million dollars. Cost you guys a million dollars? Just the Smith family. So it's a million bucks that doesn't go to disadvantaged kids just because people throw away rubbish clothes. That's right, nearly a million dollars a year, yeah. When we donate our unwanted cheap clothing, we don't think about the greater impact it's having on the charity sector. And it's ridiculous to think that it's costing them money to send our fast fashion to landfill. So I want to see if I can convince my fast fashion obsessed friends to change their ways and challenge them to slow down their fashion buying habits. See, I know you laugh at me because I'm pretty slow with my fashion. Do you reckon you guys could slow your fashion down? Do you reckon you could go without buying a new thing for a month? <gasps> Probably not. Probably not? That's no. pushing up. Yeah. It, Depends it would depend what if, events Yeah, I like, have during like. summer, I'm good for my summer wardrobe. Yeah? It's going into winter. winter? Yeah, we yeah. have enough. But don't you have stuff, stuff from last winter? I, I threw it out. Yeah. You threw it out? Yeah. Seriously? Yeah, because I needed more space to put my... Someone I'm not saying you have to be as bad as me, OK? Yeah. yeah no. But let's, you know, you can reuse and yeah. do stuff and you're on board? 
Yeah. Yeah, let's do it. Okay. Yeah, okay. One month. Do it. Think of the money you're going to save too. Yeah, I'm actually quite excited. You'll be like millionaires at the end of the month. <laughs> Before coming here, I would have been like, I have no hope in doing this. But now I've seen this, it's kind of given me motivation. Yeah, that's good. Again. If I really do put my mind to where I feel like I can wear things more than once, <laughs> I will try to anyway. Oh, that's cute. I think I will struggle with not being able to shop for a month. One month without shopping is going to be a bit hard because I do like to do my online shopping and see what's around and get a new top for when I go out and stuff, but I think I can do it. As the friends begin their four-week fast fashion diet, it's time to check in with the residents on my waste-free street. I'll bring it back. Three weeks ago, I went through their rubbish. <laughs> so to the top, but not bulging. Oh, there's room over there as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you, you occasionally have to use the neighbours' bins? Yeah, yeah quite yeah, yeah, yeah. And set them the challenge to reduce the amount of household waste they're sending to landfill. They've been getting into their soft plastic recycling. They've been doing a lot of composting and, and other things to find out how to reduce their waste. So I'm interested to see how much waste is left in their bins. Well, unfortunately, you have to get up very early to beat the rubbish trucks. Wow, Felicity and Martins is less than half. And lots of recycling. Mel and the girls, it's still a fairly big bin compared to some of the others, but smaller than it was. What are you doing up at this time of the morning? Oh, I'm just going. You're up, you're up this early. Yeah. You're up earlier than the rubbish trucks. <laughs> Everyone's cut their bins like so much already. Yeah, that's an amazing effort, isn't it? It's we now have cool. three worm farms slash compost. You have three worm we farms? Have three, yeah. That is very impressive. How are you going, Chris? Unbelievable effort. That really has made a difference. It's incredible. It's really not that hard. Yeah. I thought you were going to struggle, mate. The <laughs> residents have really taken to the task and have started a Facebook page to post questions and share tips with each other. Good morning. One thing that I would like to know about recycling is can we recycle these? Like where to put used coffee cups. I was putting them in the yellow bin and Nick was telling me I couldn't do that. A few weeks back, in a test of what can and cannot be recycled, takeaway coffee cups were one item that caused a lot of confusion. All right, so that is a paper coffee, coffee cup, cup and I would say you can recycle that. I've heard that you can't. This is a big challenging one for many people. Yeah, coffee cups. What do you think they're going to go for? I think it's recyclable. Yep. Paper, cardboard. Before, I would have put that in the bin, in the red bin. So the confusion about coffee cups, because there's all these different types, got to get to the bottom of where these are going and, and whether we can solve this problem, because given we are so addicted to caffeine, it seems like one that we should sort out. And what a huge waste of resources. If in doubt, in the bin, I think. Mm, yeah. So if the people on one suburban street are confused about what to do with their coffee cups, what about the inhabitants of an entire city? Almost one million people enter the city of Melbourne every single day. And the city produces around 2,000 tonnes of waste in just a week. In the name of research, All good? Yeah. I'm going to trawl through Melbourne's street bins to see exactly what people believe they should be doing with their single-use cups. This is not one of the big trucks. This is a no, this is no. one of the small ones. Mini. In order to do this, Mini. veteran Garbo's Tim and John have agreed to take me along for their daily waste run to clear the general bins in the heart of the CBD. Let's go and uh, get some bins. How many bins do you do in a run? It's a good question. Probably 400, maybe. 400 maybe. bins? Oh, yeah, no, it's a fair whack. That's a lot of bins. Look at this. This recycling bin is filled with coffee cups. Can a good collection of bin juice there. Coffee cups are not depicted on their recycling bins. 
nor is there any information on Melbourne City Council's website. Coffee cups are plenty. About the most appropriate way to dispose of them. More coffee cups. So with no obvious advice about what to do with them. Coffee cups, another one. It's not surprising that people are confused. I'll get it. You relax. <laughs> Going well. You're doing a beautiful haircut. <laughs> you need a break, Tim. You've been working too hard, mate. So clearly, some people think that coffee cups should be going into recycling bins, which isn't right. There's coffee cups in both of them. Every to everywhere we go, everyone's confused about where to put coffee cups, and there's heaps of just recycled stuff going in this one. The problem is that people throwing all the wrong things in the recycling makes it harder for them to recycle it. Dang. I, I, I can't believe people. They just throw it everywhere they can. It's funny how people kind of recycle at home, but then when they're out and about, they just chuck it anywhere. The other thing is maybe a bit more education too, I reckon. Yeah. A lot of people would get confused. Yeah, I think that's true. I think we, a lot of people are confused about what to recycle. Once collected, the garbage is taken to a waste transfer station. Look at that. The street rubbish is weighed and the council is charged by the tonne to send it to landfill. You get an idea of the scale of rubbish. This is like a small truck. It's not even full. There's so much. Recyclable, 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 recyclable. So many cans. Oh, yeah. Amazing. All these bottles and cans that could have been recycled. And then there are the coffee cups and the rubbish. These are just the tip of the iceberg. Look at this, so many coffee cups just from the outside of this. There's a lot more in there. But when we're picking up the general rubbish, there are actually a lot more of these coffee cups in the recycling bins next to you. So people obviously think they can be recycled. Coffee cups, they're a nightmare. Why is there so much confusion about whether coffee cups can be recycled? One man I'd like to ask is Brendan Lee. He's been lobbying for recycling solutions for coffee cups right here in Australia. Brendan, how are you? Good, thanks, Craig. So, Brendan, can I recycle this coffee cup? No. You can't, why not? I mean, can't I put that in plastic and I've been putting this in paper? This is paper. This is paper, but it has a polyethylene liner there to stop the moisture from going from the inside to the outside. Well, so it's plastic, basically. That's yeah. right. It's about 90 to 95% paper, this cup, but that 5 to 10% of plastic liner prevents it from being recycled. So if that goes in a paper recycling bin, it just ruins the bin? If some of them go in, they really, they, they destroy the recapture process of the good cardboard fibres. Wow. And what about, what about bio cups? I've seen these bio cups. Does that solve the problem? Bio cups, they're the same. It's all about the collection. Bio cups are made of compostable material, sure. But unless you collect them and take them to a composting facility, mix them with earth, introduce lots of bacteria that will process them, yeah. then they're going to end up in landfill as well. So where's it ending up? So it ends up... It doesn't matter which bin you put it in, it goes to landfills. And in fact, a lot of councils actually are of the understanding that they can be recycled because they're waste contractors. When those waste contractors bid for those lucrative tenders, yeah. they said, yeah, we, we can recycle them. Because technically they can be recycled. But they're not getting recycled? They're not getting recycled in Australia. So coffee cups are not currently being recycled. And that's because it's very costly to separate coffee cups out of the existing recycling system and into a dedicated facility. Other parts of the world, like the UK, have already started getting these systems up and running. And Brenda's organisation is trying to assess whether it could be a reality here too. But in the meantime, we're faced with the fact that the more than one billion coffee cups we use every year aren't being recycled. And to give you an idea of the scale of the problem, if we laid those one billion coffee cups end to end in a line, they would circumnavigate the earth two and a half times. And that's just Australia's output in one year. I think that if Australians knew about this, they'd want to do something about it. 
Here in Melbourne, there are over 2,000 restaurants and cafes, making this city the very heart of coffee culture in Australia. So this is where I'm going to start my campaign to fix our massive coffee cup problem. BYO coffee cup, number one, leaving now. Have a look at my tram. Today, I want to convince the good people of Melbourne to ditch their disposable coffee cups and to bring a reusable cup instead. Wake up, Melbourne, and smell the coffee. We're declaring a war on waste. We're starting with coffee cups. So I've commandeered this Melbourne tram to help me do just that. Hey, Melbourne, remember to bring your own coffee cup. These all end up in landfill. It's filled with 50,000 disposable coffee cups. Look at all these coffee cups. We throw at least many in about half an hour. And they can't be recycled. So remember to bring your own coffee cup. If this doesn't drive the point home, I don't know what will. Start a war on waste. Start with a war on coffee cups. This is tram 248. It's the Landfill Express, people. You two are the lights. Hands up if you think you can recycle coffee cups. You think you can? You're wrong. You can't recycle coffee cups. They go to landfill, so bring your own cup. Otherwise, we'll fill all the trams in Melbourne. You won't be able to get anywhere. Sorry, guys, you can't get on this tram and fill with coffee cups. <laughs> Did you know you can't recycle coffee cups? You can't. They will go to the bin. We, we throw out about a billion coffee cups a year. Do you bring your own cup for coffee? No. Yeah. Can you, will you start? I've got that in my office. In your office? Yeah. That's good, OK. Well, as long as you take it down, take your mug down. <laughs> it is filled with, have a look. No, it is literally filled. Have you seen that? <laughs> Join us in our war on waste, people. Think about it, you use it once for about 30 seconds, five minutes, and it's chucked down. Been to bring your own coffee cup express. Just reminding you to bring your own cup so you can fit on the tram next time. While I'm on the trail, I catch up with Melbourneian Jost Backer. Jost opened Australia's first zero waste cafe 10 years ago, and he's been striving to change coffee cup culture ever since. Jost, good day. Oh, my tram. <laughs> wow. Sorry about the waste. What a tram. What a waste. <laughs> You had a sustainable cafe, like a zero waste cafe. Yeah. How did you deal with coffee? Well, we offered incentives to people to basically, we had like a little jam jar system where the lid had two holes in it. And then we just offered a dollar discount every time you brought it back. It's amazing how many people still think these are recyclable. I know. Even just talking to people on the street today, they're like, yeah, that's recy I recycle mine. But I mean, it's fair enough, because if you look at the packaging, mm. it says bio all over it, biodegradable, yeah. uh, compostable. I mean, we had, a, we had three different compost systems and, and none of them were able to compost down any of these cups. But for me, it's about why are we walking around holding a takeaway coffee cup in the first yeah. place? That, I find that bizarre. Yeah, well, that's the thing is you, you just get this coffee cup and generally just walk it back to the office. Yeah. Drink it, throw it out. It's, it's you know, it lives uh, for about two minutes. It's, but the cafes are like now this? so reliant on that revenue as well. You know, there's cafes that get 40% of their revenue from takeaway coffee. Yeah. So they don't want it to change. Which is why I guess we've got the position of saying, really, you got to bring your own cup. That's the yeah. only way to really deal with it now. Is you know, give a discount, for bring your own cup. Do you yeah. think that'll work? Absolutely. The, the culture will change, I've got no doubt, and then you almost feel stupid to walk around. I mean, that's what I kind of try, try and make people mm. feel, you know, mm. how, how ridiculous am I walking around with this cup? Yeah. Know? I was saying, bring a mug, your mug. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Let's do it. You in the purple shirt. Hey, next time, bring your own cup. Look at all these coffee cups. 50,000 every half an hour we throw out. And can't be recycled. We'll race you, mate. If we beat you, you've got to bring your own coffee cup. G'day, please. When you get your coffees and your donut, make sure you take a keep cup or a reusable cup, eh? Otherwise, we'll fill the trams with these. That's mine, I think, that one. Up. Is that yours there? Don't chuck them out. They go to the landfill. Can you fellas join us in our war on waste? We're always community-minded. Good to see you. Police are on board. Yeah, you two. One's got a disposable cup, one's reusable. Yeah, well done. Every day. Every day. There you go. This guy's a hero. He's laying on the tram. Go to work clean. Yeah, good job. Yep. That's how you do it, mate. Well done. But converting coffee cup commuters is only one battle. 
If I want to win the war, it'd be great to have coffee shop owners on board as well. I reckon if I can get them to incentivise their customers to bring their own cups and actively promote it, we could start to see a real shift in behaviour. So it's time for the next wave of attack. Good. Do you guys uh, give a discount for re reusable cups? Not at the moment. Do you guys give a discount for reusable cups here? Oh, not, not usually. Just wondering, do you have a uh, refund for people that bring in a reusable cups? Like a, a discount? Not at the moment. Hello. I have a quick question for you. <laughs> do you give a discount for reusable cups here? Yes, we do. You do? 50 cent discount. 50 cent discount, seriously. You're fantastic. You're already on board. Bring in a, a mug from your grandma's house or yeah, anything reusable will give you a discount. Actually, bizarrely enough, McDonald's is one of the biggest coffee chains in Australia. Let's try them out. Hello, just wondering, uh, if I use a reusable cup, do I get a discount? No, don't? Same price for a reusable cup. McDonald's say that many of their restaurants sell reusable cups and do offer a discount for using them, but that it's not a company-wide policy. Well, maybe you should fix that, Ronald. You've got to bring your own cup. Do you have your own keep cup or a yeah. mug? It's in there. It's in there? I've got 12 of them in there. You've got two of them. I don't trust you. I don't know if it's a suit. <laughs> I don't trust you. I'm going to follow you around and check that you're not using disposable cups. Yeah, right? yeah, no, I can't stand them. I'm just wondering, uh, do you give discounts for reusable cups? We do. We charge three dollars for reusable cups as opposed to our three fifty. And do, do many people bring reusable cups? Absolutely. We have customers that come in twice a day, five days a week. Um, using those cups obviously saves them a bundle. Excellent. Great for the environment. Can we give you this then? Be part of our war on waste. Yeah, sure. Get more people to bring reusable cups, and uh... why not? Come with there. Hello. Hello, how are you? Just wondering, do you do a discount for reusable cups? Yeah, definitely. You do? Absolutely. What's the discount? Yeah. 50 cents. Do many people do it? I tend to sort of get people to do it once they buy a Keep Cup here. Um, yeah. After they buy the Keep Cup, I let them know that there's a discount and it sort of gets people to come back a bit, I think. Well, I'll tell you what, here, do you want to put this up and, and yeah. you know, advertise a bit more and we'll try and push it. And... Good on you. Thanks very much. Right. Thank Cheers. So the answer is simple. Bring your own coffee cup and support the cafes that are prepared to do their bit too. I'll give you one of these. And for cafes that want to get on board, check out responsiblecafes.org and get your place listed alongside others that offer discounts on BYO coffee cups. I'll be following this up later in the year to see if Melbourne and other cities have got on board to make a change for good. But while I'm on my caffeinated high in Melbourne, it's time to see how my fast fashion dieters are doing in Sydney. I love shopping so much. My go-to when I'm bored is shopping. They've been starved of their regular shopping fixes. I could buy like five jumpsuits right now, to be honest. And are struggling. I had a meltdown today not knowing um, what to wear. When I went out, I just wore some of my old clothes, which still looked good and I still felt good in myself because it all like worked together, but I didn't feel as fresh as I normally would with a new outfit. So I've sent stylist and slow fashion advocate Alicia Campbell to the girls' houses to help keep them on track. Hi, Hi. Estelle. I'm Alicia. And away from the shops. Today, Alicia is going to go through each of the girls' wardrobes. I really don't feel the girls understand how much they have in their wardrobes. So this exercise is to teach them that they can slow down with their fashion choices and enjoy what they're wearing a little bit more and see the versatility in their wardrobes. The only problem is I can't find, like, I don't know how to mix and match it kind of thing. OK. If I knew different ways to wear things and different ways I can style it up or style it down, I would wear my clothes so much more. And show them why they don't need to buy anything new. It is important to know what you have yeah. in your wardrobe and, like, exactly. dig back through and be like, oh, I can wear that. Forgot yeah. about this, I can wear it again. Yeah, and... exactly. I've been told that you've done a massive clean out and you have a yeah. few bags of clothes that you don't want to see again. Now, can you give me five and I want to create some magic and show you what we can do with them? Yeah. Yeah? 
this is a lot to choose from. <laughs> wow. Yeah. I really like this one. Let's take that guy. This is a bit too frilly. Oh, that's quite nice. This one still has that tag. Yeah. So these have never been worn. OK, and still have the tag. Yeah. Yeah. These girls have got so much in their wardrobes. They definitely don't need to shop anytime soon. And I'm going to show them that. Social media has revolutionised the fashion industry and fueled our shopping habits. And sports girls leading the pack with a mobile platform and interactive mirrors that allow shoppers to buy an outfit, post a picture online and get instant feedback from their friends. On average, every Australian spends over $2,000 on clothing and footwear every year. But nearly three-fifths of all clothing produced globally ends up in landfills or is incinerated within a year of being made. I want to know if the fast fashion brands are taking responsibility for the waste they're creating. H&M is one fast fashion brand that has started a garment collection initiative around the world. Customers are given a financial incentive by way of an H&M voucher for every bag of unwanted clothes they return to their stores. H&M say they send these collected garments overseas for recycling. I'm keen to see how this works, so I'm going to put this GPS in some old clothes and drop them off in an H&M bin, see if they get to the US. I guess this kind of effort by H&M is definitely better than nothing, and it probably does divert some clothes from landfill, we'll see. Uh, but I do wonder whether giving a discount is just leading to more fast fashion, which is actually creating a problem. The GPS has been dropped off in the H&M clothing bin and hopefully it finds its way to the other side of the world to be reused and repurposed. I think H&M are probably trying to do the right thing and trying to lead to more recycling. But having been in there and seen all the kind of flimsy, cheap clothing that probably is only worn a few times, I can't help but thinking that, you know, the real solution is getting away from fast fashion. We need to slow our fashion down. Despite not falling into the fast fashion brand category, Katmandu, an outdoor brand, has been transparent about the problems in the fashion industry. They've introduced clothing recycling collection bins in 160 stores across the world. And they're willing to meet me to discuss how they're tackling sustainability and waste head on. We've been wanting to talk to fashion brands and most of them don't want to talk to us at all. And that's because for them it seems like it's all about speeding up the fashion process and making people buy more and more clothes. Mm. Does it surprise you they don't want to talk to us? It doesn't surprise me in that the scale of the problem and waste for our industry is quite significant. Um, and it's a massive challenge many companies have really not started on. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a difficult one for sure. Kathmandu is part of the Sustainable Apparel Coalition and uses a self-regulation tool called the HIG Index. It measures the environmental, social and labour impacts of producing their products. And I think all fashion brands in Australia should be forced to use this rating system and advertise it on their clothes so we know what we're buying. I think the average consumer doesn't realise what goes into the making of their products. Yeah, because if you knew how much energy and resources went in, you'd probably be less likely to throw it away after a few wears. I think that's probably true. Or probably more importantly, you would be interested in buying the higher quality products that are going to last longer. It's interesting because we've now got a star rating on our food to say how healthy or unhealthy. Exactly. So you end up with a rating on the clothes saying how much of an impact it has on the environment. Most certainly, yeah. As well as not just the environment, but also the social impact of, yeah. of creating this product. So. You know, if we actually had something that said this is like a one-star shirt. It's terrible in terms of the environment. Mm. That would make it easier for people to put pressure back on. Completely agree. And I think the, some of the examples that you're demonstrating um, by piling and, and providing a visual example is a great way of illustrating to people the scale of the problem. Because ultimately it comes down to us, the consumers, to change our fashion buying behaviour. It's been a month since my four fashion-obsessed friends took on the challenge to buy nothing new. So today, I'm hoping Alicia can help the girls resist their cravings for new clothes. What 
I was amazed by I was talking to the girls is that one of the pressures on them was the need to kind of post a new picture and you couldn't wear something twice. I mean, how hard is it to kind of resist that, do you think? It's a massive pressure for them because they're getting judged constantly mm. and they're seeking validation and, um, and that is huge on social media. What others think of you is become suddenly much more important than mm. what you think of yourself. Welcome. Welcome. Come in. Thank you. Well, how you guys been going on your fashion diet? It's yeah, been pretty good. It's been good. Has it been hard? Yes. A little bit tempting. <laughs> <laughs> Just kept myself really busy and away from the shops. Like, I find as soon as I walk through those doors, it's like, oh, I need to buy this, I need to buy that. So I just think, like, like staying away from them has helped me a lot. Well, have you had any hard moments? What's been difficult? Last night, I was going out to my friend's birthday dinner and had nothing to wear. I was in my wardrobe for like an hour trying to find something. Then I ended up wearing one of my jumpsuits that I already showed everyone on social media. <laughs> and I was like, oh, I hope no one noticed what I wear. I was like, I hope no one notices I've worn it twice. <laughs> so hang on, did you not, you didn't Instagram it because you'd already worn it? Yeah, and it's already been. And did anyone notice? Did anyone No, notice? everyone was like, you look amazing tonight. And I was like, thank you. See? And I was like, yes, I was like I've worn this though. I've worn uh, it before. Result. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I was stressing. Oh. <laughs> and so they can continue to slow down their fast fashion habits, Alicia is going to show them how to swap, style and reinvent what they already own. Good luck, guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Have fun. All right, Jamie, you're first up, and I'm going to pop you in this look. I hope you like it. Which is actually a dress that I found in Tegan's throw-out pile. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to give it a go, and we're going to see if we can do a little close hop. Thank you. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Damn. Oh, oh my wow. God. Wow. I love it. I'm stealing your dress. <laughs> you can have it, yeah. yeah. Who's next? Vicky. Okay. Shall we jump in? Yep. All right. Ooh. Ooh. Love it. Wow. I would never think of this. And seeing it styled in this way, Nikki, do you, has it changed your mind and perspective on how you can wear it? Definitely. I'm going to wear this, like, on the ASAP. Oh, wow. Oh. I'm very nude. <laughs> <laughs> You're nude. So you'd say there'd be another way you could wear yeah, for both sure. these pieces? I love it. It's definitely working. Whoa. Oh, Ooh, the shoes. shoes! Oh, my God. Now, you were telling me that you haven't worn this jacket or this dress. No, this dress actually has a tag on it. And I would never, like, think to wear this dress like that at all. Like. And do you think you've learned some things today that show you that when you do yeah, add something, it, it brings a different yeah. element to the yeah, outfit? Yeah, definitely. Reason. I think I have, like, working up to, you know, how I need to change my rule. Yay! So, <laughs> 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 <I'm> a... <laughs> it's really helpful to have um, your friend's clothing, um, which allows you to save money um, and not having to buy clothes all the time. One, two, three. Oh. <laughs> Learning the new style of things, the mixing and matching has definitely helped me and I think I can get through the next couple of weeks, hopefully, fingers crossed, there's no shopping. It's a kind of a waste having all these clothes and I now realise that it's pretty silly and it's definitely not good for the environment and I'm going to change my ways about that. Well, the girls found it a lot harder to uh, not buy clothes for a month than I probably expected. Although they did learn some things about reusing clothes and probably look through their wardrobes more than they might have. But I don't get the sense that we necessarily have changed their behaviour going forward. If anything, what was intriguing about it was seeing the process and the pressures that are on these girls to buy so many clothes. and. Uh, Clothing companies put a lot of money into social media and advertising and putting this kind of pressure there and very little money into sorting out the waste that comes out the other end of that. But that's what we need to get them to do. As we've heard, H&M is one fast fashion brand that is attempting to deal with the waste they're creating. To test their system, I put a GPS tracker into an H&M clothing recycling bin. 
tracker made its way from Brisbane to a port in Sydney and sat on the dock before the signal vanished. That could mean it's on board a ship. I'm still waiting to see if it ends up at one of the H&M recycling centres overseas. The question of where our recycling really goes is something I've been trying to answer for some time on this war on waste. A few months back, I put a GPS tracker wrapped in plastic bags inside a Coles recycle bin in Brisbane. So I'm on my way to find it. It's still sitting in the same place two and a half months later. And it looks like a kind of industrial area. I just want to see why is it not on its way to Victoria to be recycled. So the GPS is sitting kind of be moving in this little area. We're kind of sitting right here now, so maybe we should go for a bit of a walk. There's some shipping containers here. Could be in a shipping container. I mean, it could be packing a shipping container ready to take. No, we just say, so you, you know, your shipping containers, they don't have plastic bags or anything in them. No, they're just storage for the bits and pieces of small yeah. stuff. So All right, we'll keep looking up. Prickles, great news. This is, it's in this area. It's not these guys. I don't know. It just doesn't make sense. Why would they be here? Why would the plastic bags be anywhere near here? Looks like, are they plastic bags in the back of that van? obviously a proper collection point for the plastic bags before they get sent down to Victoria and I'm glad at least they are collecting them and having just ended up in landfill. I wonder how often they get sent down. In this case, it looks like the plastic bags are heading in the right direction, but it's not really the solution. It'd be far better to ban them altogether. And after hounding Coles for an interview, they finally agreed to speak to me at one of their stores in Victoria. Today I'm meeting Rob Kamine, their manager of responsible sourcing and agriculture. My first priority is to ask him whether Coles are willing to do more to solve the plastic bag waste problem. Why doesn't Coles bring in a plastic bag ban themselves rather than waiting for states to tell them to do it? I, th I think, you know, led by customers, you know, they're a very practical alternative for customers. We're certainly working to reduce the number of plastic mm. bags. And with Red Cycle, we've got the only um, nationwide recycling option. Red Cycle is dealing with a couple of percent of the kind of soft plastics that are out there. Isn't it still the case where we need to kind of cut down people using the plastic bags in the first place? I mean, there'll still be so much packaging or shelves to be able to deal with. Yeah, definitely. We need to continue to reduce, um, and particularly divert from waste from landfill, which is you know, one of the things that we're working really close to with our suppliers and our stores. So yeah, I think in terms of giving the customers the option is really, really important. A lot of them like the, the grocery bags, mm. um, but then they can bring them back and recycle them. So if we encourage people to bring all their soft plastics to Coles and put them in the recycled bags, you can deal with that and it will all be turned into a product at the end. Definitely. Definitely. The, more, the more soft plastics we can get through the system, um, the, the better it'll be. Have you guys advertised the Red Cycle system? Because I feel like uh, so many people I talk to aren't even aware of soft plastics recycling. Have you promoted it? No, it's great having a conversation with you. I'm sure yeah, more well, people are going to hear I, about I, it. I, 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 but plastic bags isn't the only issue I want to raise in my meeting with Coles. My other concern is the food waste that we've seen happening on Australian farms because of the cosmetic standards set by the supermarkets. One of the things we found interesting is that a lot of the food doesn't even leave the farm. And that comes down to the, the cosmetic standards that the supermarkets impose. Have you, do you guys consider that part of the waste? 
No, so I think we consider that as part of our relationship with the suppliers and the growers that work with us, and we've got long established uh, relationships. Mm. And so we've got really good examples of where you know, customers demand that it to be fresh, um, unblemished. So something like bananas, for example, you know, our major banana supplier, the bananas that won't make it to the Coles store go into our banana bread. Um, so a lot of that produce is being captured within the supply chain. Well, it's interesting because we, we went to a farm and we saw the bananas that aren't getting there. This, is, this was a day or so's banana waste. Now, these bananas, are, they're getting thrown out. And I agree, I'm, I'm, I'm not saying that customers are going to take a totally blemished banana. Yeah. But a lot of the bananas are getting thrown away. It was just because of their size. It was, that's why we're working with our suppliers. I can't comment on those pictures. Um, that's why we're working with our suppliers to make sure we're using it. Well, that is one of your suppliers. Well, yeah, well, yeah, give, me, why, the, give yeah. me the name. Well, this is it. I mean, yeah. and, and look, it's true. It's true yeah. what you're saying. They do not in any way blame Coles or the supermarkets. They blame the consumers for being fussy, essentially. And I'm a bit more sceptical about that. Like, if you put a 180 millimetre banana or a 280 millimetre banana, is that going to be left behind, really? I think it's one of those ones, you know, in terms of customers have been really clear in terms of the reason they ch choose to shop at Coles is the quality of our fresh produce. Mm. Um, and it's, you look around, it's... it's... But it, I'm not talking about bad quality. I'm talking about beautiful bananas that are, you know, unblemished and gorgeous and are literally just chucked out because they're a little bit too thin or a little bit too fat, a little bit too long, a little bit too short. What's the solution there? I mean, what, what can we do about that? I think we need to go and talk to that, you know, talk to our suppliers and see how we can work through that. You know, who's creating this expectation? I wish I could answer it. I wish we could too. Why don't we do an experiment? I mean, why don't we put bigger and smaller bananas in here and see if people will take them and see if people, you know, if they know that it's going to be chucked out, why don't we see what consumers actually do? Yeah, I think over time we've, you know, got to a point where we have found the banana that customers want to pick up. Mm. It's not something we've suddenly just arrived at. So it's customers' fault? It's our fault? It's not. <laughs> I am I'm a customer as well. Yeah. I you know, make my decision when I buy my bananas. So I get the sense we won't see um, bigger or smaller or straight bananas on Coles' shelves soon. But I guess as, as a backup, the more we can get that stuff off the farms and into you know, charities and that is benefit. So if you guys could at least look at that aspect of it. Oh, definitely. You know, we're, we're working with all of our su suppliers mm. to make sure we can optimise the use of the, the crops. Well, I don't get the sense that Coles are going to be changing their cosmetic standards anytime soon, no matter how much waste it leads to on the farms. And that's because they seem pretty convinced that it's because of our decisions as consumers. And if you think differently, if you eat a bigger or smaller banana like I would, then hit them up on Facebook or other social media. I guess the only good side of that chat is that they say that no matter how much soft plastics we throw at them, they'll be able to recycle them. So let's test them out. It's been a month since the residents of this suburban street agreed to participate in a social experiment to reduce their waste. Thank you for bringing your bin to this party. No <laughs> At the start, their bins were full of food, soft plastics and some items that should have been recycled. Welcome. Thanks for bringing the bin. So today, to celebrate the last day of their challenge, they're hosting a street party. Good day, Jim. Good to see you, mate. Bring your bin here. Good. <laughs> They've made cakes from leftover food to share <laughs> and set up a swap stall of unwanted clothes and household items. OK, Jules, how are you going? And I've asked them to bring along their bins so I can see how far they've come. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, everyone, for joining us on this war on waste. It was a big challenge we set you, and the first time we came down here and looked through your bins, some of them were very full. So now I can look at your bins again, because every time I visit you, I have to look in your bins. <laughs> Let's have a look. look that's that. the actual waste. That's great. With a yeah. family of four, that's, that's, that's pretty great. good. And so where's it all gone? We knew recycling, we were good at recycling, but I don't think you really know how much more you can recycle than the what you do. Plastics. Like, it was amazing like, that we, we found out you could recycle. We could do, like, um, pea packets and bread yeah. packets, but we didn't know you could do chip packets and yeah, chocolate yeah, packets. Yeah. And we go through a lot of chips. We go through a lot of chips. Well, well done, guys. Let's have a look. At the start of the experiment, 
Soft plastics made up a huge portion of their general waste yeah. bins. OK. Look at that. That's good. Yeah. Plastic bags now going back to the um, supermarket. Yeah. When we have good weeks and we have bad weeks, thankfully you put us on good week. Have you gone? But since the street discovered soft plastic recycling and also composting, what a difference it's made. We've made improvements. We've gone from one and a half to a half. So. One and a half, so your neighbours are no longer getting no, stuff no. from their bins? No, no. As a matter of fact, you now have a bin that people can put stuff into. Absolutely. <laughs> the results speak for themselves. I think more of it was just going in the compost instead yeah. of in the bin, and yeah. it's made a huge difference. Yeah, there you go, sure. so look. Oh, it's made a huge difference. Yeah. With every bin I inspect, the results are more amazing. I'm keen to look from inside this, because there wasn't much to start. It's empty, yeah! <laughs> oh, there it is. It's good you can just put your waste in your pocket. Yeah. <laughs> I reckon uh, maybe just put this out once a year. <laughs> Well, this street, this community has done an amazing job and uh, they've gone above and beyond the challenge that I set them. And I think it started from looking at the waste that they saw in their bins and just going, well, where does this go and what can I do to reduce it? And they've really answered that question and uh, they've been quite inspirational and I hope that everyone else in Australia can follow their lead. So let's all continue this war on waste because if we all start with small changes, then the results could be huge. Hello, guys. It can be as simple as taking your own reusable shopping bags next time you head to the supermarket. Or if you're shopping for fruit and veg, think about the farmers who've grown it for you. It takes nine months of hard work to get here today. Don't shy away from buying the imperfect stuff. It all tastes the same. And tell the supermarkets that you don't really care about size or shape. Size just doesn't matter. Over the next few months, I'm going to keep hounding the politicians about banning plastic bags. And you can help too. If you want plastic bags to be banned in your state, let's keep the pressure on the politicians together. You're the Environment Minister, you want to sort this out? And if your state already has a plastic bag ban, ask the politicians to tighten the loopholes. Say no to plastic wherever you can, and we can help our beautiful oceans and marine life. That's the scary stuff. I'm not about to give up my morning coffee fix just because coffee cups aren't being recycled. Coffee cups, they're a nightmare. But I will take my own cup and seek out the cafes and major chains that support BYO cups with discounts. Does Coffee Club give a discount? That was pretty confusing, but I think the answer was no. Why not encourage your local cafes and coffee chains to do the same? Give me one of these. It might even save you money. Wine shirt, that's a wine shirt! And rather than simply throwing away clothes and household items, we can all look to ways to reuse, repair or recycle them at the very least. It's working. <laughs> but this story doesn't end here. Later this year, we'll return with another episode of War on Waste to see the changes you've made and also follow up the supermarkets, the fashion retailers, the plastic recyclers and more. We need to look towards the future to use waste as a resource gas from the landfill, directly yeah. here to our power station. Okay. Because together, we have the power to make a difference and reduce the staggering amount of waste we're creating right across Australia.